Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to your seventh day in the C programming language. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the difference between an array and a pointer. They're related concepts or often we can think about pointers like arrays or having array-like behavior, but they really are different things. So I just want to talk about the context in which an array is an array and a pointer is a pointer. And along with this discussion, I also want to review a little bit about arrays and then talk a little bit about two-dimensional arrays. Now, even though we think about them as two-dimensional arrays, it's important for you to still understand that memory is still just a linear array of bytes that you address through the array data structure. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and review arrays a little bit. So. For those of you who have taken some of the other lessons in this series, you'll know that arrays are contiguous blocks of memory. And often I'll draw them out just like this, where we have all the different blocks of an array here. We index from zero and however large our array is here. So in this example, perhaps this is a character array and it has seven indices here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But of course we address them by zero and it stores characters here. So we might store something like Mike and I'm indicating the individual characters and maybe a few extra here at the end. And we null terminate if we have a character array, and this was how we represented strings in the C programming language. So that's just a little bit of a review on arrays and where we've seen them. In the previous lesson, we have even looked at things such as char star star, which is a multi-dimensional array. So I'll go ahead and bring up some code here so we can take a look here. And that was our argument variables. And that was essentially an array of strings. Now, another way that we could have represented this that might be a little bit more clear for some viewers is to say that this is exactly equivalent to doing char star argv and then the array brackets. So that's indicating that we have an array of character pointers here, which, well, we think of these as, again, C strings. And this was our first sort of look at what we would call a multi-dimensional array in C. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the code and then work our way up to this idea of a multi-dimensional array. And along the way, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between pointers and arrays as well. So I'm going to go ahead and draw your attention here to the uh, left side of the screen here. And let's make sure that this font's big enough. Um, I think that'll do the trick here. And I'm just going to go ahead and again, create an array here. So I have array here and let's just go ahead and make it uh, integers this time. And I'm going to go ahead and populate this array with some numbers here. So I equals zero, I less than seven, I plus plus, and so on here. So array at I equals uh, some value here. And then maybe we can have another array or excuse me, another loop here where we print off the contents of this array here. So we'll do a print F here, percent D, the format specifier for integers and the value that is stored at this array here. So here's what our program looks like. Let's just go ahead and give this a compile. I'll use dash G. So I always have debugging symbols in case anything goes wrong in these examples. And we'll output this as prog here and nothing wrong here. So if I run this uh, pretty straightforward program here, again, we get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what if we wanted to figure out the size of this array? And again, this is a little bit of a review from previous lessons. In fact, way back to our first day in C where we learned about this. Uh, let's go ahead and just figure out the size of the array. So I can do print F and this will be some size here which is a long uh, integer, and I can do size of the array here. And let's just go ahead and recompile, rerun this, and you'll see that we get this value 28. So go ahead and remind yourself for a moment, why is this value 28 as I go ahead and draw our array here? And we have seven items here. So let me make sure I have them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And well, this is a integer array here. So I'll go ahead and annotate it at the top here, int array, 
with seven items. Well, the size of one integer is four bytes. So four bytes times seven elements equals a size of 28 total bytes here. Okay, so that's where the size of comes from. So that's some information we have, or at least the compiler has, when we create this array here. This array is allocated on the stack. That is, it's between these curly braces here. So let's just go ahead and uh, view everything. So between this curly brace here at line three and line 17. So we know exactly what the size of the array is. And that's really what makes an array an array in the C programming language, this ability to recover the size here of this data structure. Now, there are some interesting things that we have learned about previously in this series. So for example, a pointer. So if I created a pointer to any integer here, and I'll just create it here. And I'm just going to call it P array. Well, I can assign it to array, which is really just grabbing the address. I could also write it this way of the array at the zeroth element. So it's almost like if I just drew an arrow here and was looking at the front of this array here, and that would be a pointer. Now recall that a pointer just stores an address. So let me go ahead and do that here. I'll create a integer pointer here, p array, and we'll assign it to array. And again, I'll compile this a few different ways just so that you can see the equivalent uh, forms here. Uh, but let me go ahead and recompile this just so you can see that it works. And I'll rerun it and no problems here. And again, I could do the equivalent uh, statement here uh, that I showed in the uh, whiteboard where I take the address of well, whatever the first element is here. Okay, and that would also work here. Now, now that I've got a pointer or that I'm pointing to this array here, I can walk through each of these elements if I wanted to by just specifying the offset. Okay, and we specify the offset by using the brackets here, which is really dereferencing that array. So let's go ahead and rewrite this loop here. And I'll go ahead and give some comments here. Loop through our pointer. And at the top here, we are setting up our array and looping through our array and printing the size of our array. And then here, two equivalent ways to create a pointer that points to the start of an array. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. But now I want to actually loop through these elements here. So P array, and then I'm going to offset by I here. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile this. It recompiles, and if I rerun it, and we carefully inspect the values, well, we'll see that this is exactly equivalent because we're pointing with our pointer the same memory addresses. Okay, so at this point, they're pretty similar ideas uh, as, how, as far as how our array is working and the pointer to our array. But here's where things differ uh, slightly. So what I'm going to do now is print the size of our P array here. Print the size of P array, our pointer. And let's go ahead and see what the size of that is. So P array, same format specifier, percent D here. And just to make this a little bit more clear, I'm going to annotate this with P array. And we'll go ahead and add the array here at the top here. All right, and then let's go ahead and recompile that, give myself a little bit more space for the printout, and go ahead and make your prediction as to what's going to actually happen here. So when I actually run this, this is a bit strange here, in the sense that P array is showing up as eight and array is 28. So the size, hmm, what could be going on here? Well, the reality is remember that P array, if I highlight below here and let me do it in black here, this is a different data type. It's a pointer data type here versus of course our array, which is this array data type. So they are different or they behave differently. A pointer is not an array. They are separate concepts. So in the context we have here where I'm just pointing to 
the first element of an array, I can essentially use the pointer like it is an array here. And in fact, that's how we're going to have to pass arrays into functions for the most part by using pointers. Just to give a few concrete examples of this, let me go ahead and show you some areas where we've been doing that before. So if you've noticed carefully, if you look at functions like the string functions, which we looked at in a previous uh, lesson, you'll notice that we're often passing pointers here. We're not passing anything with brackets explicitly that would indicate it's a sort of type of array. So that's how we work with arrays in C or pass arrays around in functions. Because in truth, what would we have to do if we passed in a array to a function here in C? So let's go ahead and try to do that and just see what happens here. So let's go ahead and create a function here. And I'm just going to call it void and print array. And I'll just create int array here and I'll put some brackets. And maybe let's just copy this here. So I can go ahead and just type this here. And let's just first of all, see if this compiles. And it does compile. So if I try to run it here and let's go ahead and just have it uh, instead of doing the work here. Well, I'll just go ahead and type print array and the array here. Okay, so now we are using this function here specified at line three and passing in our array. So let me recompile that, rerun it, and well, it is doing the same thing and that's pretty cool here. And now you're saying, well, Mike, um, didn't you just say we can't pass arrays and this doesn't really preserve an array behavior? Well, let's go ahead and try to see what's going on here. <laughs> and remember that the way that we sort of understood this was, well, if I put the data type here, and let me just go ahead and give this a different name just so we can be a little bit clear here and that this is the parameter here the parameter here and two more substitutions let's go ahead and see what the size is so let's see if this is truly being treated as an array where we know the information about how big it is or is this decaying which is how we say this to a pointer so if i recompile this and it's already saying, hmm, warning, size of an array function parameter will return size of int star here. Well, let's go ahead and just run it because that's a warning and we can probably just run here. <laughs> and uh, you will see again that this parameter is indeed a pointer. So this is decaying or being treated as a pointer. So when we pass arrays through functions, they often decay to pointers. That is, we lose the information about how large that actual array was when it was first allocated. So that is the difference. And if you want to do a little experiment just to sort of prove this to yourself, and you could sort of ask this question, are arrays and pointers the same? You could try creating some array here like this and create a pointer to array one and assign it to array one. And let's see if this works. Uh, well, what it says is, oh, we need to specify a size here. Let's just say it's four elements. Doesn't really matter here. Um, this is saying initialization of int from int star makes integer from pointer without a cast. Uh, oops, I forgot my uh, pointer here. This is what I want here. Uh, and let me go ahead and comment out this line here so we don't get any uh, more warnings here. Um, this is allowed here, this little experiment. I am allowed to create an array and have something point to it. But let's go ahead and try the opposite. So experiment two, can I create a pointer and treat uh, it as an array? Or rather, uh, maybe I can write this a little bit more uh, clear. Can I treat an array like a pointer? Because I can treat the pointer like the array. Are arrays and pointers the same? So I'll say no. But we can treat an array like a pointer. 
in the different contexts. And let me just go ahead and finish this experiment. So I'll create array two here of some elements and reverse the order that I'm doing things. A pointer to an array. And I'll try to just assign this as follows. And here again, you'll see I get this invalid initializer here. You know, I could dereference this, but, um, or excuse me, this on PRA2 here, but truly all I'd be doing is trying to attempt to store some value. So this is not the same thing. I can't initialize array this way, but I can point an array to the first block of memory in an array. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring this together again by looking at our picture here where we are able to create an array and then I'm allowed to have a pointer point to that array, but I can't do vice versa. So pointers and arrays are different things, but often you can treat a pointer like an array if you know something about that block of memory that it's pointing to. So let's go ahead and fix up our example here a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. I'll get rid of our experiments. And I do want to use this print array function because it would be handy to have some of these functions, for example, to print arrays and work with data here. So let me go ahead and uh, get rid of the rest of this here. And if I'm going to write this actual function here, what additional information do I need to pass in? Well, I'm lacking size information about my array here. So typically what you're going to see is in the C API, size T, maybe unsized int, maybe just an integer, but size T is usually the right thing to use. And it'll specify the size of this data structure here. So we'll loop for the size because, well, where do we know that size information? We know it right here where we've allocated it. So I'm gonna just pass in seven and I can rerun this and compile our program and we are good to go. So this is what's needed since we lose that size information in our functions. Now, other things that you might do to build on this or abstract on this is actually build your own array data type, like you might see in C++, Java, or many other languages that carries the size with that struct. So for example, just to show you how to do this, what you might want to do is create a array data type. I'm going to call it array T. Uh, or actually, let me just call this array. And for the uh, type definition here, array. And you would have whatever the data is. This is the array. And then you would have the size here. And then what we could do for our actual data structure here is do something like pass in an array T my array and just print it out here because with our actual array uh, t that we're using here i would have my array and then the size here okay so let's actually go ahead and finish this example off just to show you how you might build your own array data structure and um usually uh, this is going to require me to write uh, two functions here uh, one that is the array constructor, or often we'll just call it array initializer in uh, C, uh, be called the constructor in other languages, and we might just want to pass in the size T here. Okay, and what that's going to do is allocate the uh, size of this array here. Uh, let's just call this size here. And this function is allocating a new array T pointer. So we're going need to malloc uh, for that. Stand, so we need our standard library here for free and malloc. And let's just go ahead and do that here. So I'll go ahead and create a new array T pointer, new array. And I like to put the explicit data type that malloc is returning. So the size of, well, however big one array T is. Um, some C programmers will suggest not doing this. I happen to write a lot of C code that gets used in C++, so that's needed for C++, so that's why the uh, cast is there. So let's go ahead and set our new array size equal to size, and then our new array. We also need to uh, set the data to, well, however big our size is. So size of an int here times size. 
And then let's return the new array here. And I might actually want to go uh, one step further and set these values to something. For now, I'm just going to leave this um, as is so you can see the point here. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger because our code's getting uh, rather large. And you can see our sort of array data structure. Um, so let's go ahead and replace this here. And what we're going to do is create a new array T in the main here. So I'm going to just call this some um, data. And this will be from our array that we initialized. Let's say it has eight elements here. And then let's just go ahead and print off whatever happens to be in some data here. Okay, and let's give this a compile, see if I've made any silly mistakes. Um, oops, looks like um, one or two here. Um, because we have my array size, now we're getting the data from my array and the data that's internal to the actual array here. Okay, which is in our structure here. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that. Let's run it. And while everything happens to be zero, we don't have that guarantee with malloc. Um, so you do have to be a little bit careful there. But again, what this example is showing you is, well, two things that we're reviewing here. One, that we are using a pointer here, and it's sort of acting like an array. We just happen to know that this um, memory that we're allocating, uh, both for our, uh, well, in this case, in our data here, is going to be a chunk of memory that we can point to. And we do have the size. That size information is carried with this struct here. So we have the size and the data. And then I've shown some helper functions or sort of a way to use C in an object-oriented manner to create this array and this um, pass along whatever that array happens to be, in this case, some data here where we initialize it or construct. This would be called a constructor in other languages, and then use some helper functions or member functions with this particular array T type here. So we can see that this is a very lightweight way to construct or do object-oriented programming in C, which is pretty cool. And we've seen how we could do this with the array data structure. Now, now that we've looked at arrays in pretty deep detail, hopefully I have convinced you that an array is different than a pointer, and they are two different concepts. Uh, what I want to do now is talk about two-dimensional arrays. So I'm going to go ahead and clear up this code here, just so we can have something uh, simple to work with here. And we won't need uh, pre and malloc. And let's go ahead and talk about 2D arrays here. And in order to understand them, let's go ahead and give ourselves a clean whiteboard here just so we can understand what's going on with a 2D array. And I'm going to leave this definition here, though, on our whiteboard, because whether it's a 1D or a 2D array, the same definition applies here. An array is always a contiguous block of memory. So even if I create a array in, say, two dimensions, and let me just label this as 2D, and sometimes you'll hear this called multi-dimensional because we're allowed to have 3D arrays and so on. So I'll just give us this term, multi-dimensional array. And yeah, let me write that a little nicer. We would represent it such that it looks like this here, where we have, say, the number of rows here. These are our rows. And these would be our columns here. Let's give ourselves, say, four columns here. Here are our columns. All right, so if I wanted to access something, and I'll draw the indices in here, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four. This is roughly, uh, though this is exactly what we would do. So I would create an array here, and I'll label it as 2D. And this is, well, how many rows? Five rows by four uh, columns here. And if we want to access, say, something in the first row, so let's select something uh, that's going to be in this first row. And in the second column, we would access it as follows array 2d 
and we said the first row and the second column here. Okay, so that's what we would do here. And we could set that to some value. So let's just go ahead and work with this and see what we can learn from 2D arrays and how we might use them. So I'm going to go ahead and just create this example here. And let's just do array 2D and let's make it five by four. Uh, and of course, we can have any dimensions that we want here, but I want to do something a little bit uh, irregular. So we have the rows by the columns here in C. OK, and if I want to populate this, usually what I'm going to do is use some sort of for loop and say for i uh, equals zero while i is less than, well, however big our rows are, i plus plus. And then for each of those rows, we want to look through each of the individual items here going across here. OK, now there can be a reason why you want to um, look at the data in particular orders that is sort of going across the rows here. Uh, and that has to do with hardware and how you get good performance based off of data locality. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that in a future lesson when we talk a little bit more about hardware. Um, so there is a reason I am iterating through things in this order here. J less than four, J plus plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and just assign our array uh, different uh, values here. Let's create a uh, counter here and just assign it to zero and just increment the counter every time. Uh, so just something like this. So this will assign the value to the counter and then increment it. And let's use another loop here to print this off here. And let's print our 2D array. Okay, so instead of changing the values here, and just so you can see all the code, we will print this off here. So I'm going to do a printf. And let's go ahead and just do the uh, integer here. I'll put a space here. Uh, I'll try to make it look a little bit uh, nice here. Maybe let's tab separate everything. Um, and then after we do every item in the uh, row that we're at, let's go ahead and just print off a new line here. OK, so let's go ahead and give that a try. Let's go ahead and compile this, see if I've made any silly mistakes. Um, and yes, I meant array uh, 2D here everywhere. So 2D and here as well, 2D. All right, so I'll recompile. Let's go ahead and rerun this. And oops, uh, segmentation fault. Looks like I <laughs> messed up uh, some of my uh, iteration here on a bad uh, copy and paste. I'm sure you folks saw that before I did. So let's give that another run. And here is our 2D array. So again, take a moment to look at this and stare at the actual values here, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and imagine how we are running through this nested loop here to look at each of the items here. Or perhaps it's more useful to look at the initial assignment here, where we were looking through all of our rows, starting first at row 0 here, and then attaching each of the items here. Now, the important thing to keep in mind with this 2D array here, and I'm going to need a few more uh, colors to uh, illustrate this, is again that the memory is contiguous. I am still getting the uh, memory uh, one uh, item at a time here. And let me go ahead and get a new color here. Uh, so I am still looking at things in this direction and then going back to the start here and here, but we're not really jumping anywhere. It still is a sort of one dimensional array that the 2D array aspect of it just makes it convenient for us. So if I go ahead and add in the labels here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on, I could still just lay out this array like it is represented in memory here, and it is still just going to be, well, 20 uh, different items here. So let me do that. So again, this is the same array here. The difference is that I'm just visualizing it in a little bit of a different way here. So don't be confused when folks talk about 2D arrays. Um, again, it is just a contiguous block of memory always. The difference is that when we're actually moving through this array and moving 
by this offset for each row, well, how many positions are we actually moving here? So in order to get to the next uh, row here, I have to move one, two, three, four, or the length of our columns here. So however much information that is. And usually we call that the pitch of the array here. So I'll just go ahead and give us some definitions here. The pitch is the length, or sorry, I should say uh, a little more specifically, the width of a row in an array. And sometimes you'll hear other uh, words for this, uh, but pitch is very common. You can just think of that as how many columns do you have? So what C is actually giving us when we use this notation here with the two different brackets here is a little bit of a convenient formula. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how to access this 2D array from a 1D array, because this is really what we have. The difference is though, since we had four columns, which are indicated here, zero, one, two, and three, this is our first row. And this width here, which I'll indicate with the blue here, that is our pitch. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a function that just takes in a pointer for a 2D array and it will print it out. So you can see that it does the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a function, print 2D array with a pointer and we'll just take in the integer pointer here. And we will want some information like the number of rows and the number of columns that we have here, okay? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is write a for loop here, int i, well i is less than our rows, i plus plus, and for int uh, j, I'll try to get this right the first time, <laughs> j is less than columns, j plus plus, and let's go ahead and get our indentation. Now what I'm going to do is do that same printf for whatever the value is, and it'll give ourselves a, a tab here, but I only have a one dimensional array. If I had a 2D array, I would have star star, but instead I just have a one dimensional one here. So what is the actual index that I am getting here? Well, let's try to use our figure here and see if it can help us out here. So if I'm on the zeroth row here, or the ith row here, that's indicating or selecting which of the rows I want here. This row here, this row here, this row. Again, that's what I is doing. If I wanna shift down a row, that is go from this row to this row, I need to multiply by however wide we are. That's our column here. Okay, so that's how I'm moving through here. Now, once I am on the uh, proper row that I want, then I need to choose the actual uh, column here. So again, if I'm on this row, I'm looking through each of these elements. If I go to the next row, I'm looking through each of these elements here and so on. So that's where I'm using plus J here, which is looking through or iterating through or offsetting, uh, however you want to think about it. Once I've selected a row, offsetting and selecting the next item here, because J is what is growing here. So again, I don't have two pairs of brackets here, but I'm just accessing my 1D array here. Okay, and then let's go ahead and do a print uh, F here uh, for a new line. And let's go ahead and try this function out here. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, make this screen a little bit bigger so you can see all the code here. And what I wanna do just to confirm that this is working is well, we'll print out our 2D array here and then print our 2D array with our function. So again, what I'll do here is uh, call this function. So print uh, 2D array with our pointer here and we'll pass in array 2D. Well, how many rows did we have? Five. How many items in each of those rows? Four. So four columns per row. And let's try to uh, compile this. Let's see if it works here. Um, and, hmm, well, we are getting a little error here. It's saying incompatible data type here. So let me clear that up here and recompile just so you can see the error. 
And it is actually giving us a hint here, which is rather interesting, stating that, well, we can figure out that the thing you're passing in, we know how many columns it has. Uh, we don't know about the rows, but we just know it's a pointer to some number of rows that each have four elements in them. Um, and if I go ahead and run this, because C is going to treat it just like a pointer here, we will see that we are getting the equivalent thing. So again, indeed, C is just treating this as a pointer here and our little formula here for accessing a 2D array as a 1D array here with just one brackets is in fact working. So there's a couple ways that we can fix this. And the reality is the way that I tend to work with things is I tend to only ever create 1D arrays in C, even if I want to access them or represent a two-dimensional array here. If I try to compile this, it is going to actually complain here if I do this. Um, but why, and go ahead and take a, a moment to think about this, would I actually only be creating 1D arrays most of the time in C? And I'll give you a moment to think about this. Well, the reality is this was very convenient for creating things on the stack. But oftentimes I want to heap allocate an array, especially if it's going to be a very big collection of data. Think about data that you might have two or three dimensions. And I work a lot in computer graphics. So for instance, we have three dimensional data or for a 2D game, we would have very large images that are some pixels across and some pixels wide. And we'd have to sort of allocate those in the heap here. So that's a motivation for why I tend to do things that way. So I'm going to redo this example here and just do this using a uh, heap allocated array here, just to show you again how this would work here. And again, as I mentioned, I like to put in the, the casts here. So I would do size of an int and then I would do, well, however big that is, times the rows, times the columns. And I'll just put those in manually here. Uh, for now, I'm going to comment this out. Now, none of these are going to uh, work here. And uh, because we're now only using a 1D array. Now, just to answer your question, if you're thinking, I am allowed to malloc like this, I could create a series of pointers uh, with a series of rows. Uh, but again, I just prefer to do things one at a time. In fact, you see this uh, char star star and we figured out how to access uh, a array of strings. OK, uh, but this is how I'm uh, going to do it here just to give you some of the practice here. So again, if I'm accessing my 2D array here, uh, I need to figure out, well, how big's a row? What row are we on? That's I and then which part of that row are we on? That's J in the column moving across each of the individual cells here. OK, and then we'll do the same printout here. So the um, columns here times I plus J. OK, and just to make things a little bit simpler here, I'm going to create a int here for the columns and for the rows, just so I don't mix things up. And again, I usually think rows first and columns, so I'm going to order them appropriately. Rows times columns. OK, and let's go ahead and just make those substitutions here. Rows and the columns. And that'll make, again, a little bit more clear what the code is doing. I try to avoid magic numbers, <laughs> meaning the five and the four that just appear in your code in order to write good code. So let's go ahead and give this a compile, see if I missed anything. Uh, I am missing standard lib, and I also need to always remember to free my memory here. So let's go ahead and re-include standard lib so that we can malloc and free. And I'll rerun this, and now we'll see we get the code here. No warnings, uh, no problem here. But now you've seen a simple way that you can just heap allocate uh, an array, just worry about it in one dimension, figuring out the total number of bytes that you need, and then you can access it in a 2D manner by defining your rows and columns. Because again, an array is just a contiguous block of memory. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson and it was useful for you to see. And again, I'll state it again, an array is just a contiguous block of memory, but an array is not the same thing as a pointer. A pointer stores an address, and if we point to an address, we can 
move to the next address using the brackets as an offset or pointer arithmetic if you prefer to move along chunks of memory that your program owns. So go ahead and let that lesson sink in a little bit. I know there is a lot going on, but hopefully it clears up what goes on with pointers and arrays and as well as thinking about arrays in two dimensions. And of course, you can have arrays in three or four or more dimensions if you like. Uh, but again, I found most of the time working in 3D, you have 2D or 3D arrays and usually I'm still thinking about them as just one contiguous block of memory and doing that little manipulation so that I can access a array as a 2D array, but again, only as one contiguous block of memory. So folks, if you enjoyed that lesson, if it was useful, if you're enjoying this series, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss future lessons. And if you have comments, if something got confusing in this lesson, please let me know and I'll be happy to try to clear those up the best I can. All right, thanks for your time.